everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a 12-game Major League Baseball slate for you. Before I get started, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button? It really helps the channel a lot. So let's go ahead and get into it. We do have some weather concerns throughout the slate, so do keep in mind on those. But I do think all the games will play today, so do, uh, so yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the pitchers here. So we're going to start with Strider for Atlanta, obviously. He's facing San Francisco. He also faced them in his last start and scored 10, 10 strikeouts. He also had a big fantasy point game with 38 fantasy points. Uh, he has as, as much upside as anybody. I don't love using pitchers on back-to-back -back starts versus the same team, but his upside is very high, so he is in play today. Uh, Brandon Woodruff from Milwaukee, also in play. He's had three starts since coming back from, from his injuries this time and has two games over 20 fantasy points. I think he's a bit pricey for the matchup, and his K rate may be a little bit sus today, but he's a pretty good, decent play today. I think he's an all right option, though he hasn't pitched many games this season. Uh, Senga for the Mets is interesting today. I think a 15 to 25 fantasy point game is in play here. That said, the Angels have some potency today, so it is a risky play, uh, but he is capable of a good outing in this matchup and at this price point. Uh, then we're going to look at Lynn for the Dodgers. Now, since joining the Dodgers, he's had four games over 18 fantasy points, three over 20. Boston has had some upside throughout the season, and they have some today, but he's pitched well so far and produced three wins and four total earned runs. Uh, I do expect Boston to score one or two runs, though, at least, uh, though I do think he has a decent K rate, which gives him some upside in this matchup. Uh, Dylan Case for uh, the White Sox is in play today. His upside is here as he's facing Oakland. He can definitely get over 20 fantasy points today if he gets a decent chunk of strikeouts, which is definitely impossible today. That said, he still feels a little bit risky, and some Oakland players are hitting the ball very well right now. Uh, then we'll look at Miller for Seattle. I think he's a 15 to 20 point range day today. Uh, his K rate has been inconsistent, but he's capable of a good game here against a bad team. Uh, I do think he is capable, but he definitely feels high risk on the slate. Uh, then we'll look at Bibby for Cleveland. Now he does face Toronto, and while he's had some good games as of late, he has have a low floor. Toronto has a good offense, but they've been inconsistent recently, and he's done well versus them as well. Uh, I think he's a little bit He's a lot cheaper than he has been the last few games, which also gives him some utility here. And he's got a pretty good ERA for on the season as well. Uh, then we'll look at um, Bassett for Toronto. Now, he is facing Cleveland. Now, the problem here is that he uh, he probably will score over 10 fantasy points today. But getting over 20 is going to be tough with a low K rate team that he's facing as he's also inconsistent from the strikeouts. That said, if he can get a win, that would definitely give him a boost today. And he's nice and cheap. That gives him some potential on this particular slate. Uh, then we'll look at Singer uh, for uh, Kansas City Royals. Now, he's actually dirt cheap today, and he's got some Hail Mary upside, as he does have 20 fantasy point upside here. Um, he's had four games over the last six over 20 fantasy points, including a game versus Seattle. His floor is really bad, and his K rate is inconsistent, though, so he is a Hail Mary option, but he's dirt cheap, and he helps you pay off at other positions if you choose to do so especially if you think most of the pitching is rough today. Pitching does seem a little bit awkward today uh, in general. So let's go ahead and get our catchers here. We're going to start with Will Smith uh, for the Dodgers. Uh, he's been hitting the ball about average throughout the season, but uh, he has been inconsistent. He is a home run threat, though, and he definitely draws that potential today. But he does feel a little bit risky at this price point, uh, especially with his inconsistent play. Um, then we're going to look at Wilson Contreras for St. Louis. Uh, he's hitting the ball very well. He's getting hits in most games. Uh, he's not scoring over double-digit fantasy points a lot, though. That is a little bit of a concern, as he hasn't done it in about eight or nine games. Uh, though he does have some fantasy point potential today, and he's cheap. Uh, he does need to help. I would like him to hit a home run, really, to pay off here, but he is capable on this particular slate. Cal Raleigh is a home runner best option today. He's had some massive games. Other than that, though, he does need to hit a home run, really, to pay off here, as his price is a little bit higher than I'd like it to be. But he's definitely capable today. And then for kind of a Hail Mary uh, play at this position, Andy Rodriguez for Pittsburgh. Uh, he has some really nice upside in this matchup. He's hitting the ball pretty well recently with a 290 average over the last 10 games. He also doesn't strike out very much, though he doesn't play every day. So you do want to make sure he starts. But if he does draw the start, he is capable of a good game. Maybe the first base, we're going to start with Freddie Freeman. Excuse me, for the Dodgers, he's been in a little bit of a slump, but he's starting to get out of it. It looks like the last couple of games, he's had three straight 10 fantasy point games. He definitely needs more than just 10 fantasy points to pay off here, but if he can hit a home run, he'll definitely be in play on the slate. Uh, Goldschmidt uh, is also available here at first base. He's nice, cheap. 
He's hit the ball very well recently. His uh, batting average has really risen some as of late. He's starting to hit the ball with some power and stuff as well, so I like his potential. And he's scoring fantasy points in different ways, so it definitely gives him some utility here. Ryan Mountcastle... Oh, sorry. Ryan Mountcastle, also in play for Baltimore. Uh, he has been pretty good throughout the season. He has some home run upside, and he has some good fantasy point production potential. He doesn't strike out too much, which definitely helps as well, and he's got a great matchup here against Colorado's pitching. And then Candelario uh, for... Uh, for, uh, excuse me, sorry about this, Candelario for Chicago Cubs, also in play today. He has been inconsistent recently, but he's had a couple good games the last couple. Uh, I do think he draws some good upside in this matchup and is a Hail Mary home run play. Uh, moving to second base, we're going to look at uh, Mookie Betts, who is a core play today. I do think he has uh, just a near must play, even though at this high price point, he's averaging almost 16 fantasy points a game. He's been hitting home runs, and he's also been doing crazy things with four multi-hit games in a row, including a five-hit game the other day. And he's even scoring over 20 fantasy points without home runs. So, And he definitely has the home run upside today as well. He's a awesome play on the slate. Uh, Jorge Polanco from Minnesota is a good contrarian option. Or if you you know choose to put Mookie in the outfield, as you can do, uh, Polanco is a great option at this position as well, as he's hitting pretty solid and has nice potential on this particular slate. Uh, Edmund for St. Louis is kind of a sneaky play today. He's a little bit cheaper than I expected him to be, uh, though, uh, as I thought he would probably rise over 5,000 eventually to this year. Uh, but he's still under 4,500, 4, so uh, which is probably about as high as I want him to be, to be honest, to use him. He has been a little bit slumpy the last few games, but he definitely draws good home run potential on this slate. Uh, I also like Julian for, uh, for um, Minnesota against Texas. Uh, he has some really good potential. He's hitting the ball very well. Uh, the only issue really is that he doesn't tend to score a ton of fantasy points sometimes because he'll just get a couple hits. Uh, but he definitely draws good potential today, and he's nice and cheap. Maybe in the third base, we'll look at Rafael Devers for Boston. Now, he does draw good metrics here. He's been hitting the ball well recently, and I like to use him whenever he's hitting the ball well and has some run potential, and this is definitely a situation that that falls into that category. Arenado for St. Louis, also in play today. He's hitting... Uh, a little bit inconsistent throughout the season, but he's been somewhat streaky as a result. Uh, though he does draw some good home run potential today, and so I think he's a great contrarian option off Devers if you want to go with that. Uh, and then, obviously, Polanco uh, can play at this position. So can uh, Candelario, who can also play at uh, first base. So, uh, moving to shortstop, we're going to look at Ella De La Cruz. Uh, he has been inconsistent as he's started, but he's still only hitting 200 right now for the last 10 games. But he's getting stolen bases and stuff that really boosts his potential. Though he is very expensive and hard to roster, uh, he's not a you know a great option considering the price. But he is managed to score a good fantasy point per game right now. Uh, same goes for Corey Seager, though he's hitting the ball very good with a 300 batting average over the last 10 games. Obviously, that's a little bit weaker than what he has been. But he's hitting home runs and he has nice upside in this matchup. I think he's a great option on the slate. <laughs> Tommy Edmond can also play at this position uh, here in the outfield or sorry, in the shortstop position. And then Willie Adamas for Milwaukee. He's kind of a cheap play that's starting to hit the ball pretty well. He's had three home runs over the last 10 games. He's hitting 333 too, and he's had four over the last five over 10 fantasy points, which give him some nice upside, especially at this in, uh, nice price point. And then Mateo for Baltimore can also play in the outfield. He's playing at shortstop. He has stolen base potential. He's been a little bit inconsistent throughout the season. Doesn't hit the ball particularly well, but if he can get on base, he can score good fantasy points because he can get stolen bases. So he's high risk, high reward from that perspective. Maybe in the outfielders, uh, we're going to start with Mickey Betts, who obviously I already mentioned at second base. He can play here. Uh, Ronald Acuna is also in play as he is just uh, monstering the ball with over 315 batting average over the last 10 games. He's also got a nice stolen base potential today and has some nice home run potential as well. Uh, Corbin Carroll also in play. Uh, though he has been streaky this season, he is hitting the ball very well right now. Even without the home runs, he's scoring a decent amount of fantasy points, so he's a little bit expensive. Uh, I really would like him more if, I, if he had a massive amount of home run potential, but he does have good. He's just not great today. Ian Hopp is also in play for Chicago Cubs. Uh, he's been boomer bust throughout the season. He's been a little bit slumpy, but he still managed to score a lot of fantasy points. And while he's scoring good fantasy points, I think he's a great option on the slate, especially at this price point. Uh, then we'll look at Santander for uh, uh, for Baltimore as he's hitting the ball uh, pretty inconsistent throughout the year, but he's got some nice power, and he's hitting home runs, and that's what I like to see. He's had three home runs the last two games, 
And if he can continue to hit the ball well, then he's definitely somebody you're going to want to roster on a slate like this that's big, and you're going to need some outfielders that are a little bit cheaper that pay off uh, for expensive options. TJ Friedel is also a great option today as he's hitting the ball decently well. He's not a huge home run threat, but he definitely has hit the ball solidly, and he's scoring a decent amount of fancy points lately. Alex Verdugo is in play for Boston. He's been kind of hitting the ball very well recently. He's not usually a big home run threat or a stolen base threat, but he's managed to do a couple of those the last couple games, so I think he's a viable option. He's hitting the ball very well, and he's scoring fantasy points in bunches, uh, and so that's what I like to see. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is a core play for me for St. Louis. He's hitting the ball uh, somewhat inconsistent, but he does have home run potential today. It seems like the metrics for him today are just off the charts. He's got a great matchup here. And then, uh, finally, Mike Atakman for uh, the Cubs. Now, he's been a little bit slumpy. He's kind of a boomer bust play, but he has some nice potential today for a home run, and he doesn't strike out a ton. It's just a matter of getting some quality hits and getting them in the right places, and the Cubs scoring a decent amount of runs. Some sub-$3,000 options for you today are David Peralta in outfield, Michael Bush in the third base, Ryan Noda at first base, and Alec Thomas in outfield. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And have a nice day, guys. I am going to add here at the end uh, that I am going to try to do some college football today. Uh, I'll try to get out a video tonight, so stay tuned for that. And have a nice day, guys.